Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is handling of volumetric solutions in QC laboratory. This is a critical part of the analysis in QC laboratory. In this video, let us learn on handling of various types of volumetric standards that are required for routine analysis. Types of solutions generally used. Normal solutions, these are solutions that contain 1 gram equivalent weight of active substance in each 1000 ml of solution. Gram equivalent can be calculated by number of hydrogen atoms in acid and number of hydroxide atoms in base. This is a simple calculation. For example, for hydrochloric acid, it's only one hydrogen atom available in the formula. So its equivalent weight is one. Similarly, for sodium hydroxide, it has only one hydroxide ion. So its equivalent weight is also one. Take calcium hydroxide. Its formula is CaOH twice. Its molecular weight is 72.1. It has two hydroxide atoms. So its equivalent weight is half of the molecular weight, which is 36.05. Molecular weight divided by the valency would give you the equivalent weight. This is an amount equivalent to 1.0079 grams of hydrogen or 7.9997 grams of oxygen. This is another way of expression for equivalent weight. They are designated as 0.1N, 0.5N, 1N, etc. These are the general normal solutions made. However, less than 0.1N like 0.05 or 0.02 normal and stronger than 1 normal also sometimes necessary. Molar solutions. These are solutions that contain 1 gram molecular weight of active substance in each 1000 ml of solution. For molar solutions, only the molecular weight is considered. They are designated as 0.1 m, 0.5 m, 1 m, etc. This is same as in normal solutions. N is replaced by the letter m for molarity. Let us see how should it be prepared. Always purified water is used for preparation of all aqueous solutions. Purified water quality should be used for preparation of aqueous solutions. For purified water quality, you have to refer USP. It has to pass the TOC and conductivity test as prescribed in the USP. When used for preparation of unstable solutions such as potassium permanganate or sodium thiosulfate, it should be freshly boiled and cooled. These reagents are sensitive to the presence of dissolved oxygen or carbon dioxide in the water. Even certain solutions are pH sensitive. So this step is necessary. All volumetric solutions, if practicable, are to be prepared at 25 degrees Celsius. As described in few other video training programs, the room temperature means that it should be at 25 degrees Celsius plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius. The concentration of the solutions must be within 10% of the target value. When the solutions are made, they should be within 10% of the nominal value. We will see some examples in the coming up slides. The precision should be within 0.2% of the value. For this also, we will see examples in the coming up slides for better and easy understanding. Let us discuss necessary care required while preparing these solutions. Exothermic solutions have to be made carefully. They should be cooled to 28 degrees Celsius and mix well before final makeup. This point is important. When some volumetric solutions are made, it generates heat. So it should be cooled to 25 degrees Celsius 
before making up to the mark in the flask. While making sulfuric acid solutions, care should be taken in sequence of addition as it should be slowly added to water, not vice versa. Cool to 25 degrees Celsius, mix well and then make up. This many of us would have experienced. It is necessary to handle carefully. After taking adequate water in the flask, sulfuric acid should be added in several increments sideways so that the acid slides slowly into the flask. If you add directly, it would splash. You have to be careful. After makeup, shake well before standardize. Here, we have to ensure thorough mixing to make it uniform and consistent. While preparing potassium permanganate solution, care should be taken not to expose too long to atmospheric air. Since potassium permanganate is a very powerful oxidizing agent, but it is very sensitive oxidizing agent, so its exposure to atmospheric oxygen should be minimum. While preparing non-aqueous solutions, care should be taken to make all volumetric apparatus totally dry. By definition, the solutions should be totally free from any traces of water content in the glassware used for preparation. This example explains more than words. For one normal solution, the concentration should be between 0.9 and 1.1, which is 10% of 1.0. So 1 plus R minus 10% is between 0.9 and 1.1. For standardization, the precision should be 0.2%. For a solution with 1.092 normal, the value should be between 1.094 and 1.090. For a solution 0.1065 normal, the values should be between 0.1063 and 0.1067. So the precision should be 0.2%. Calculation in these two examples will give the results as calculated above within 0.2%. Let us understand what a primary standard is. Primary standard is a reagent that is extremely pure, stable, has no water of hydration and has a high molecular weight. A primary standard is reliable readily qualified substance. Some features of a primary standard are high purity, stability that is low reactivity, low hygroscopicity and efflorescence, high solubility if it is used in titration, high equivalent weight. These are important features of a primary standard. Hygroscopicity is an indication of the capacity to absorb moisture from the atmosphere and efflorescence is the property of some substances to lose wholly or partly their water when their crystals are exposed to dry air even for a short period. High solubility is also required as it should quickly dissolve completely in water for titrations. Some of the important examples of primary standards are sodium carbonate, potassium hydrogen phthalate, potassium dichromate, ceric sulfate, potassium hydrogen iodate, sodium oxalate. These substances meet the specific characteristics of the primary standards as described above. Let us see what is a secondary standard. A secondary standard solution is a chemical term 
that refers to a solution that has its concentration measured by titration with a primary standard or its solution. They are prone to be influenced by atmosphere environment. The concentration may change over time. It is usually standardized against a primary standard. They are hygroscopic leading to variant strengths. They can get easily contaminated as they are highly reactive. These are the characteristics of a secondary standard. These standards are evaluated and standardized using the primary standards only. Routine standards at a glance. Here is the list with titration class, relevant primary standards and secondary standards. This is the typical list for acid-based titrations and redox titrations. Please note that potassium permanganate is a powerful oxidizing agent, but it is prone to decomposition faster. That is why it is classified as a secondary standard. This has to be standardized using sodium oxalate or oxalic acid. It is recommended to use sodium oxalate over oxalic acid because its purity will be around 99.95%. Let us see how to store the volumetric solutions. All the volumetric solutions have to be stored in appropriate containers. For example, acid solutions should be stored in borosilicate glassware. Borosilicate glassware is a superior class and is non-reactive. Soda glass bottles are likely to leach into the volumetric solutions. Base solutions, particularly sodium hydroxide, should be stored in HTPE bottles. Bases are highly sensitive to silica glass. It is always recommended to store them in HTPE bottles. Sodium hydroxide is more reactive with glass. Never store them in glass bottles. Do not expose too much to uncontrolled atmosphere also. You can see slimy sedimentation in the bottom of the bottle if exposed too much to the uncontrolled atmosphere for sodium hydroxide solutions. Oxidizing agents like potassium permanganate should be stored in low actinic glassware. The meaning of low actinic glassware is it is a light resistant glassware. That means you have to understand as amber colored bottles. Non aqueous solutions like perchloric acid solutions also should be stored in amber colored bottles. Similarly, photosensitive solutions like silver nitrate are also stored in amber colored bottles. Let us see how re-standardization is done. Stability of the volumetric solution must be established. It can be carried out as test at a frequency weekly for several weeks, evaluate the drop in potency, if any, against agreed variation. Based on the evaluation, take one week less from where the normality falls below the agreed variation. This is the right strategy. For example, if standardized every week for four weeks, and the normality falls below 10% of the original value after four weeks, assign the shelf life one week less. That is, assign the shelf life as only three weeks for such volumetric solutions. Same strategy may be adopted for any other volumetric solutions also. It is recommended to have a protocol and report for such activity. For all these exercises, there should be a detailed protocol and report. Other aspects of importance are 
the directions given in the pharmacopoeia for one method only, but other methods of standardization capable of yielding at least with the same degree of accuracy may be used. This is important. You can use any equivalent or better method that yields accurate reproducible results. But in case of any controversy, the pharmacopoeial procedure is considered as valid. When a solution is to be used in an assay in which the endpoint is determined by an electrochemical process, example potentiometrically, the solution must be standardized in the same way. This point is also important. Same method used in the test should be used for standardization also unless its validity is established through another validated procedure where it is directed that any necessary correction be made by a blank determination the determination should be done using same quantities of the same reagents treated in the same manner as the solution or mixture containing the portion of the substance under examination but omitting the substance under examination. So blank determination means this is the understanding. Concomitantly means determinations or measurements are to be performed in immediate succession. Readings carried out in quick succession is called concomitantly. In general, the directive to prepare a solution fresh indicates that the solution is of limited stability and must be prepared on the day of use. This point is important. Freshly prepared means the solutions made within the day of analysis. I hope that the information on handling of volumetric solutions is understood well. Review your system of handling of volumetric solutions and capture all these salient features into it. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe like and share. Thank you.